Welcome back to Sliders Pod. Today you are joined by your host Mo, and this is the debut episode for our series Ask a Student. And we have a guest star, Christina. Okay, Christina, could you tell us who you are and what do you do? Yeah, my name is Christina. I'm 20 and I'm a medical student at Newcastle. Okay, great. And how did you pick your course? So, um, so picking medicine for me, it was it's one of those like very typical sorry, stereotypical choices. Like from very early on in GCSE and stuff, I always really liked biology. I really liked science and I did quite well in school. So naturally just medicine was like my main option. Um, And then during A-levels, I did some work experience as well. And I like shadowed doctors and stuff. And it was just something that I really liked. So I just thought medicine would be like a good choice. Um, I chose Newcastle in particular because it's not too far away and I didn't want to be too far from home. And the course looked really good as well. Like a lot of people had good things to say about Newcastle. So, yeah. Okay. So you're always quite science and biology oriented from an early age? Yeah, math and science what I was quite good at. So why would you say um, you found medical school to be the course you wanted to go into directly rather than for, say, biomed or pharmacy, something like that? It was a combination of medicine was what I really liked. For example, with pharmacy and biomed, there's not much patient interaction. Like, I guess, you know, pharmacy to some extent, but it's a lot more like clinical focused on like the drugs or the science behind it. Whereas medicine, there is a bit of like um, like personal contact and stuff. You do get to see people day to day. And I like how there's like a lot of, um, it's like a teamwork. There's a lot of like teamwork if, if that makes sense like you get to different people work with different people which I like as well um I feel like as a pharmacist depending if you're in the community or in a hospital you're quite independent like you work on your own most of the day um yeah. stuff like that. so um yeah it was just a combination of things that's, that's understandable and how would you describe the demographics in terms of race and gender on your course so far at uni yeah medicine is very female dominated like a lot of people would probably think it's the opposite, but I think most courses are like 60% female and then 40% male. Um, I, I think one medical school, it's like 70%. So it's like a lot of girls. Um, race wise, it's quite interesting. So it's a lot, it's very largely like white dominated, but also um, I'd say like Southeast Asian as well. Um, we do have a few international students. Um, and then in terms of like black, the black population, I'd say like 10%, maybe less. Um, I'd say it's a mix. Okay. Um, would you say that Newcastle University does a good job in particular of um, tailoring your, the course to fit the needs of the diverse, of the like BAME community, for example, or no? Um, in first year, I would probably lean more towards no. Like, um, you know, when we'd have a lecture learning about skin diseases and rashes and stuff, all the pictures would be of like white people, or white patients. But um, I did notice as soon as the George Floyd thing happened over the summer and the whole Black Lives Matter movement, they massively changed their approach to things. Like now, whenever we have pictures of patients, there's always an example of someone with pale skin, someone with dark skin. Um, So they have changed things now. They've also like asked for our feedback and stuff, like what they can do to improve. So it has gotten better, like comparing first year and second year, it's been quite different. Okay. And in terms of uh, the initial application to university, How did you tell your personal statement to medicine? Mm -hmm. Um, With medicine, they always tell you that um, you should kind of, um, I know some courses you can talk about a few different things. Like if you're applying to biomed, you can talk about medicine and biomed, but for medicine, you do have to talk fully about medicine. So I tried to talk about the work experience that I did, as well as like the books that I'd read, um, some of the trips that I'd been on, the skills that I'd gained, like leadership, teamwork, communication and stuff like that. Just showing what skills I have to prove that I'd be a good medical student and a good doctor so yeah that's kind of what I talked about okay and you said earlier on that one of the reasons you chose Newcastle University was because of how close it was was were there any other reasons particular to the way Newcastle um, treats medicine or educates you guys that affects your decision So with medicine, there's a few different styles of courses, like the way that Oxford and Cambridge treat their, um, sorry, teach their medical students is very different to how Newcastle does it. Um, And there's like lots of different ways that you could teach. There's three main ways. And um, the way that Newcastle does it is a way that I quite like. You have a mixture of um, like seminars, small group teaching and lectures as well, rather than just at Oxford and Cambridge, it's like mostly lectures, which I didn't really like. Um, I also like the fact that Newcastle is quite a big city. Um, I I was born in London, so I like the fact that it's kind of not too big of a city, but like not a small town either. And um, yeah, I just thought there's a lot to do in the city. I'd heard good things about like the clubs and the nightlife. So yeah. 
Yeah, we do have quite a rich nightlife here in Newcastle. That's <laughs> un, that's an understatement. Not right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And when choosing your course, did you have a long-term goal in mind? Were like you always sit on the NHS, or do you have any dreams or anything like that beyond in, term, in another country, for example? Um, I'm quite open. So, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'll definitely work in the NHS for a period of time and for a while, but I do know about people who've gone to Australia and they're living like their best life over there or people have gone to America. Um, so I'm open to it. It depends. I know that the NHS doesn't treat their junior doctors that well, so I'll see how I, I'll see how I feel. But, yeah, I'm open to it. No. So when choosing your course, some people have to think about job markets and uh, the supply and demand, whether there's any need for people with that course or degree in the future. Did you have to go through anything similar when you were choosing medicine or no? Yeah, I think with medicine, you're quite lucky. Like you'll always need doctors. You'll always need people who you, you always need doctors, really. So I think that's not something that I ever worried about. If anything, that was something that pushed me towards medicine even more, knowing that I'll have a degree where I'm always in demand. Um, and I know lots of people who graduate from medicine who don't necessarily become doctors, like they go into management or they start their own company, like you can go into working for the government. There's just so many options. So it's a degree that's like in demand. Okay. And have you done any research since you joined university? Have they had any career expos or anything along those lines? Um, I don't think we've had any. I know that for a lot of other courses, you have to kind of look at careers like from early on, internships yeah. and stuff like that. I've not really had that. Um, no, we don't really get exposed to that that much. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay, so when it comes to the studying side of your course, how would you say you study and does it help you? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's mostly, so I'll go to a lecture, I'll, you know, I'll pre-read the lecture, have a look at what it's about, try and get an understanding. Then when I'm in the lecture, I'll just try and understand. And then I just mostly do flashcards, to be honest. I don't take notes just because I find that to be very time consuming and it doesn't actually help like the information go in my head. So um, I just do flashcards, I use Anki and I use Quizlet sometimes. Um, I find YouTube videos like explaining a topic, going over the anatomy, that's really helpful for me as well. And um, yeah, it's just mostly flashcards, quite boring. Okay, that's fine. And are there any, are there any unique facilities in Newcastle or the medical school, for example, that help you out? Um, I think we have really good clinical skills teaching. So pretty much when they teach you how to examine a patient or take someone's blood pressure and stuff like that, like our facilities are quite good for that. I know some other some other medical schools aren't as good. And we also have um, teachers who are kind of like specialized in their area. Like people who teach us pathology are like specialists. Sometimes we have consultants who are like super niche, really specific, teach us about their topic and their area of medicine. So we have teachers who are like really specialized, which is which is good. And have any of these specialized teachers helped develop any particular passions for the niches they, they teach you in? Or did you already have a previous passion for something else that isn't available at Newcastle? Um, I really liked women's health, like pediatrics and women's health going into medicine. I still quite like it, but um, I don't know, like speaking to lots of different consultants and stuff, it's kind of opened my eyes up to lots of different other things. So um, I quite like psychiatry now. Um, I quite like I don't know, GI, like the digestive system. There's lots of different things. So it's kind of like opened my eyes up to um, the different specialities. Okay. All right. And for since March, anyway, you that was your first year on the course. We've had the whole coronavirus pandemic. Other than that, have you had any major obstacles? And including that, how was Newcastle dealt with that? Uh, major obstacles? Um, that's actually, you've asked this at a good time so earlier on this week um i got exam results for like my january exams and i we did two of them i passed one of them but i failed the other one and the reason i failed was because um i started a youtube channel like in second year pretty much and i think i was dedicating so much time to that like editing and filming and stuff that i was probably spending less time revising that's probably why i failed i fell by one percent by the way so it was like really really close yeah. um in terms of how they helped me, I basically had a meeting with my supervisor to talk about like where I went wrong, what I can improve on and stuff like that and how she can support me. So that was quite helpful. Um, you know, if you fail an exam, you're not kind of left on your own. They do give you a bit of support on how you can study and stuff. 
she also, she also talked about um she could give me like these meetings with someone who can help me with my revision like to guide me on like how I can make my flashcards and stuff um, so I'll probably like look into that as well um, but yeah when you do have like any obstacles they are really really eager to try and help us in, with with stuff like that and with mental health as well they always go on about this is where you can reach out to here are some links for websites that you can use here's some counseling stuff so yeah they're really keen to like help us all right and the quality of your lecturers you've gone on about the fact that Newcastle has access to niche uh, doctors that are in certain fields but uh, in terms of overall quality and their ability to teach you, would you say that they're pretty good? Yeah, I'd say it's good. I would say, like, I did have a bit of a shock when I came straight from A-level because I know some people studying medicine like graduates. Some people have had gap years. When I came straight from year 13, um, you naturally, the teachers will teach you something and then that will show up on the exam. But at university, when you're studying medicine, sometimes they'll teach you things, but there's actually, you need to do a bit of wider reading. Like, you have to look up, you have to look up other things and that will show up on your exam. So if you just study the lecture content and you do the exam, you might be a bit surprised that there's questions that you don't know anything about. So um, I'd say the lectures are, are good, but you do need to do a bit of wider reading yourself in order to do really well in your exams. Okay. And would you say there's sufficient facilities that are available to medical students in particular that help with that wider reading or research that you need to do? Yeah, so we have a library dedicated to medical students, the Walton Library. Um, I'd say it's pretty good. It's quite small, to be honest, but there's lots of different books there that you can use. There's lots of different like, equipment and stuff. Um, they have like anatomical models showing like the different structures in the body as well. Um, yeah, I'd say it's good. It's quite difficult right now because you have to book out the library. You can't just walk in and out and have a look at stuff. But um, yeah, that does help, though. Okay. And what would you describe as your hardest and easiest assignment so far while you've been at uni doing medical? The easiest one, we just had to make this like leaflet, like just um, like a three three way fold leaflet about like any disease. That was quite easy. That was our very first assignment in first year. The hardest one, um, probably like a presentation. So we had to come up with like, um, I think a 10 minute presentation and speak to like a group of 20 people. That was quite difficult because it was in first year and I was I was quite shaky with public speaking. But um, we, we have another presentation now and I'm probably not as nervous for that one because it's something that I've done a couple of times. Um, but yeah. So how did your course affect your mental health? That's another good question. Um, first year, so first year I struggled a little bit with my mental health, not honestly not because of the course. Like I remember when I was struggling the most with my mental health, I actually did the best in my exams, which was so strange. It was more like the social side of things. Like this wasn't, this was before Corona. So everything was like out and about and I still had access to all societies and stuff. Um, but I just struggled to like make friends, to be honest. It was something that I struggled with a bit in school and I think maybe it carried on in uni. Um, and yeah, that was the main, that was the main thing. It was just like making friends, the new environment and stuff like that. And um, how did you handle it in the end? I mean, yeah. Um, so I, yeah, all those mental health services that they bang on about, I just reached out to one of those and got some help there. Um, the uni does like counseling and stuff. I didn't reach out to that exact counseling service, but I got counseling elsewhere and that was quite helpful. Um, and then I joined a couple of societies, which helped a little bit. Um, and yeah, I just kind of like the counseling really helped. It kind of changed my mindset and things and like how I thought about myself and how I thought about making friends. So yeah, that's how I dealt with it. Would you say that the medical society is a good place to make friends? Did you make any friends through that, through that society or is yeah. it more information research oriented? No, I think MedSoc is actually very, very social. So they have like a free bar every single Friday and there's like free drinks, free alcohol. Um, so that's very, very popular. I never went to that, which I do regret. I wish I did because I probably would have met lots of people there. It's not very like sciencey at all. It's like purely social. So yeah, I probably should have joined MedSoc to be honest. Okay. And do you have any advice for people that are applying for your course? Um, I'd say just persevere. It can be quite daunting applying for medicine because it's so competitive. You see lots of really, really smart people applying and you're like, how, you know, what are my chances? I've got no chance of getting in. I'd say just persevere, to be honest. Um, try and try your best to get as much experience um, as you can. So it's difficult right now. But if you can read books about medicine, read books written by doctors, um, try and get online experience, go to like online conferences, Zoom calls and stuff. Um, just any form of experience that you can get is really, really good because it looks good on your application. And try and keep like a hobby, like a sport or an instrument that you play. That looks really good to universities as well. Okay. And there are, are there any tips that you have for anybody that's applying to Newcastle University overall in general? 
Oh, I don't know. Um, I'd say maybe if you can in your personal statement. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know if I have any tips for Newcastle Institute in particular. I was going to say write on your personal statement, but I don't think that's good because then the other universities will be like, what's going on? Yeah, that's fair <laughs> enough. That's understandable. Yeah. Okay. And so far, you've been at uni for about a year and a half now. What would you say is a lesson you've learned throughout your stay? Oh, um, what's a lesson I've learned? Um, I think everything happens for a reason. You might have some tough times. Actually, I think anyone who goes to uni, you're guaranteed to have a time that's like not so great or you're guaranteed to have a tough time. Um, you know, that tough time is just an opportunity for you to like learn more about yourself and to just overcome any obstacles. Um, yeah, everything happens for a reason. Just try and learn from each situation that you're put into. Okay. And the most useful thing you've uh, like learned on your course Medicine wise? Medicine wise, the most useful thing I've learned, um, A, B, C, D, E. It's pretty much this method of if someone's like dying, that's how you check what's wrong with them. And it's A, B, C, D, E. That's the most useful thing. Because obviously if someone's dying, you can like check they're okay. 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 So what would you say are your wins, losses and lessons of uni overall? Wins, losses. Okay. Um, wins, I would say, in a, weird, in a weird way, I'd say like starting my YouTube channel, just because I've met so many nice people from that. And like, honestly, it brightens up my day whenever I get like a comment or someone message me, messages me on Instagram saying like, oh, I watch your videos. That's really, really nice. Um, losses, I would say, to be fair, I don't, I, don't, I don't really believe in losses because I feel like you can always learn something. Like I, I could say like that exam I failed recently because that's the first ever exam I've ever failed, but I've already learned that I need to just manage my time better and maybe spend less time on YouTube and stuff. Um, so yeah, what was the other one? Wins, losses? And lessons. Lessons, yeah. I'd say that lesson of just managing yeah. my time. Pretty much sums it off. Okay. And obviously we've, uh, there's been a couple of questions in the media for a while now concerning the fact that uni students still have to pay full price for their courses, despite the fact that mostly everything is online now. Mm -hmm. Would you say that the quality of your lectures have been up to par with the first year or has uni been a scam so far this, this uh, half of your course? I, I don't think the quality has been the same for sure. I think it's also a lot more independent. I don't know if you've noticed this with your course, but like they've given us a lot more stuff to like study on our own. Normally it, we'd have like um, three or four days a week of like lectures, whereas now we only have like one or two days a week of, of lectures or like, sorry, no, I don't know if that makes sense, but like we have a lot less lectures basically. Um, and the lectures, they're all on Zoom and they're just not quite the same. I'd say the quality hasn't been, hasn't been the same as first year for sure. Mm, yeah, there's been a complete drop off in contact hours and yeah. interactivity is a lot tougher as well when you're talking through Zoom. Yeah, that's just a situation that we have to live with at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's been lovely having you. Um, oh. If you want to plug your YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, so my YouTube channel is just Christina Alia on YouTube. Um, and yeah, stop. Christina Alia, okay. Well, this has been Sliders Pod. I'm your host, Mo. And this has been our guest star, Christina Alia. Okay, so this has been the final, ep the first episode of Ask a Student. And join us next time in about a month's time and we'll join you with a new course. Okay, thank you, Christina. No problems.